Howdy friends, my name is Wes Lee. I repair band instruments for a living. Thanks for stopping back by my shop. Today what we're going to be working on is part two of the Barry Sachs, that beautiful old King Zephyr that I had. Man oh man, I finished it up today. Well, when I was making a video that was going to be part two in that series, uh, it was all about leveling the tone holes and making the pad cups right. It's very delicate, painstaking, time-consuming work. It's also as boring as watching paint dry. Maybe even more painful than that. Dreadfully boring. There are some other videos out there where the repair techs go into great detail and their angles and they're much more exciting than what I had to offer. So I just scrapped that. But what I do want to talk about, showing some different tips and tricks that I use on working the instrument, how I set things up, and go one step further. One of the number one questions that I always get, Wes, what horns do you play? I say I play everything. Long, long time ago when I was in repair school, almost 30 years ago, we had to play every instrument. I think it was one of the most valuable things that I got out of repair school. I grew up playing trumpet and trombone. You can cover the brass side of things. You know how that's supposed to feel. In repair school, we had to be able to play the woodwinds as well. You had to be able to discuss with a player what they were feeling on the horn, which means that you have to be able to play. That doesn't mean you have to be a virtuoso on the instrument, but you have to be able to play it. And so I'm going to show you some things that help me to be able to help the instruments. And the advice that I give has come from 30 years of talking with different players. And when I make adjustments to their horns and then I have them play it and say, okay, why did you do that? Why did you play it that way? What am I listening for? That helps me as a tech. So I'm going to pass some of that along because I haven't seen any videos on that. And you get to hear that beautiful King Zephyr honk. So, okay, enough chit chat. Let's get going, let's get to the bench. All right, here we go. So this is this beautiful King Zephyr. Notice we got all of the lost motion out of all this. We refit all of these keys. If you're overhauling an instrument, it's imperative that you refit all of the keys. Otherwise, the, the pads will move around and they'll always be fighting to find their home. Uh, always do key refitting, everything. Good and tight, make it feel like it's on ball bearings. The players will love you for it. When it comes to the padding and having things seat, you've heard me talk about that I wanna feel a solid positive close and then I bounce my fingers to see if, I that's an exaggeration, I flex my fingers to see if anything will jump. So I know I'm not using any thumb and I'm but what I'm feeling is boom. Everything is solid. The other thing let's zoom in here. No lost motion on anything. That means when the primary pad is actuated the second, or if you're on down, because the, the bis B flat on the upper stack gets closed, everything moves at the same time. You see that? That's super important. And when you press this down, tight, tight, no bounce, no bounce, no bounce. And over here on this, this is the G sharp key that would normally off open here. When you close this, nothing. That's what you want. And it just those three keys. Remember, I talk about the popping sounds that they make. This whole horn just plays. You want to have consistent thickness of the pad showing. Okay. First tool up is a tool that you can buy. I made this one. Dig through your parts. This makes a good project, especially when you're 
having snow days or can't work or just the shop is slow and or just to just to learn a different skill set. This is a piece of dowel. This is a piece of brass rod. This is a flute key. You cut out, cut the flute key off. You silver solder it. So you work on your brazing techniques. You silver solder that. Put the dowel in the lathe. Make the shape that you want. Drill it. Put some glue in it. It's great. What is it? It's a pearl protector. Now you can add fire and you're not going to melt the pearl or the plastic. When I do a full overhaul like this, I always dress the tone holes. These are not files. These are more like sandpaper discs. They're faced on the back, which makes a good leveling. I check the level of the tone hole with this side, and then I rotate this side and make everything level. I used to make my own. You've seen me talk about my rubber plugs. I just have these in all sizes, all kinds of different things. This is one I turned on the lathe. Here's some big ones that I faced down and have done. It's very important to have a flat and clean surface for the pad to sit against and take a proper seat. <laughs> amount of pressure from my hands. Another thing that I want to do is I want to tongue from the bottom of the horn tongue the low B flat, in this case is no low A, low B flat. I want to play a C, so that's everything down, and then I want to take my pinky and work the G sharp. I want to hear if there's a change in pitch if the G sharp opens. If I hear a change in pitch, I know that the G sharp is opening, which means that's going to affect my B and my B flat. They won't come out. Then I want to play from that same G chromatically down, tonguing everything. pause at the side B flat which is these two and the side B flat right because then you also have the one and one maybe you do some people for different character of the sound you, you're depressing the F sharp key I'm sorry the E key to get E F sharp and the best B flat the F key, which is the F, F sharp, and the B flat, and then chromatic side B flat. These are some of the things that I'm listening for. You want to feel over all of your mechanisms to make sure that when you oiled it or greased it, that everything is quiet, <clears throat> excuse me, that everything is quiet and still that pop. And you know that your horn is tight and gonna play right. Well friends, thanks for stopping by the shop today to see how the old King Zephyr Barry Sachs turned out. Man, what a honker. Really just big and beautiful and bold. Just love that, man. Just love it. It's going to be a great, great horn. I can't wait to hear that on, on the concerts coming up because I know we're going to have concerts again. I'm holding, I'm holding tight to that feeling. It's coming. We're having uh, 
snow in Mississippi today, so it's uh, kind of chilly here in the shop. I hope you were able to get some tips and tricks out of what I do. A lot of people ask about all the tools and stuff that I make. I hope the playtesting portion of this video really gave you some ideas to think about in when you're testing an instrument. Having basic stuff will help you do so much better repair work. And once you learn the basics, then learning to go even more, make a better tone, make a, it's, a, it's just another avenue for you to do better work. That's, that's the thing. And uh, it's, it's really, you need to be able to do it. It's like a mechanic, he works on the car, he rebuilds a motor. Well, you gotta fire that motor up and make sure all the pistons are hitting right and the timing's right. And the water pump's doing what it's supposed to do. Same kind of thing. When you overhaul an instrument or work on an instrument, you have to be able to put it through its paces. Even if you're starting out rudimentary, it'll be okay, you'll get better. Build a foundation, learn the notes, learn what's what on the horn. It will help you, I promise. There's a lot of extensive stuff that we do in the upper register just as well. I was showing the middle and the bottom of the instrument. You know, that's a big part too. It's all important. It's all encompassing. So be, be good to yourself when you can. Thanks for watching. Drop by again sometime. We'll see you later.